Biotic factors are the living components of an ecosystem that affect the survival of a species. So just like the abiotic or non-living parts of an ecosystem affect the survival of a species, well so do the living components. Essentially what that means is that in an ecosystem, organisms interact with each other. And it's those interactions that have an influence on the survival of the species. Species need to have appropriate adaptations to be able to uh, cope with and tolerate those interactions. There's some interactions that are, are mutually beneficial for both uh, of the species and there's some where the interaction is positive for one species and negative for the other. So there's a number of different types of biotic relationships that we're going to, to talk about and itemise and for each one we're going to analyse whether it's, it's positive or it's negative or neither for the two species involved. So um, let, let's go ahead and write them down. So the first one is mutualism. And for each one of these, I'm going to say whether it's, so we're gonna have species A and species B. So with mutualism, important thing about mutualism is that both species benefit from it. So with mutualism, both species benefit from that interaction. And in fact, many times it's mandatory. One species can't survive without the interaction of the other. Great example is the, uh, the bacteria that live inside the stomachs of cows. Those bacteria are able to break down the cellulose in the grass. So, uh, the bacteria benefit from having somewhere to live and to have a ready supply of cellulose and the cows um, benefit because the bacteria breaks down that cellulose so the cows are able to extract the nutrients. Another example is the bee and the flower. The bee benefits because it gets nectar in which it can use to, to make honey uh, and the flowers benefit uh, because the bee is the pollinator. So mutualism. Uh, both species benefit. The next one we have is called commensalism. And in commensalism we have one species benefits and the other species doesn't seem to have any benefit at all but is also not affected by it. Now I would probably argue that there's so few if any real examples of commensalism in nature because it appears that uh, really when I, I think that if you find something that looks like commensalism it's probably because we don't know what the benefit is to the other species. The example of commensalism that I like to think about is when you have air plants like epiphytes, um, bromeliads, orchids etc that are attached to a tree they benefit by having a substrate or something to attach to uh, and they have that nice height. Um, it doesn't appear that the tree has any direct benefit but perhaps that's because I don't know what the benefit is. So commensalism, does it really happen in nature? Not sure. The next one is amensalism. This one does happen in nature. Amensalism is when you have one species that is negatively affected and the other species no effect at all. Great example of this is when you've got your elephant that trods down to the water hole to drink from the water hole and it squashes the grass and kills the grass. The grass is negatively affected, the elephants aren't benefited and they're not negatively affected at all. So that's an example of amensalism. One is negatively affected, the other there's no benefit. Uh, there's no negative, it's nothing. Another one is parasitism. So I'm sure you've heard of parasites. 
A parasite is an organism that lives on or in a host. The parasite benefits by having a place to stay and also by getting nutrients from the host. And the host is negatively affected. So a mosquito on a human, a tick on a dog, an internal parasite like a worm inside the, the, the guts of a, a human or a dog or any animal like that. These are parasites. So it's the parasite that um, is benefited and it's the host that's negatively affected. Interestingly, it's not just about animals or um, there's uh, often there's parasitic uh, uh, plants as well that, that feed off host plants. Uh, another one is competition. Now with competition, it's about competing for resources. So those resources might be food, it might be shelter, it might be a mate. There's always one species that it's negatively affected. One species can't get as much food as they'd like, can't get the real estate or the, you know, the, um, the shelter that they want, can't get the sunlight that they want. And then if you've got one species that's dominant, well they might actually benefit. But often what happens is that neither species in a competition actually benefits. So this could be plus or minus, and the other one is minus. The last one we have is called predation. And that's the old classic predator-prey relationship. One certainly benefits because it, um, it eats the prey. So it has a good day and the prey has a bad day. So this is the predator. And this is the prey. So biotic relationships is when we're looking at an interaction between two species and we're looking at whether the species benefit or are negatively affected. And there's a whole heap of terms that we use to describe those relationships. So just like we saw that there was adaptations for um, abiotic factors to assist organisms to, to tolerate and to um, exploit abiotic factors, well we have the same sorts of things with biotic factors. For example, a classic one is predation. Um, we have organisms that have camouflage that uh, for both the predator and the prey to conceal themselves uh, against the environment to, um, to either you know, improve their chances as a predator or their chances as a prey. And there's a whole heap of different adaptations depending on the type of relationship.